What's up everyone, Zach Slife here, and today we're gonna check out why I spent $100 on a guitar cable. So what I'm holding right now is one of the Paul Reed Smith silent switch instrument cables. I've seen these around different music stores for a couple years now, and I decided that it was finally time to check one out. Not that I have any issues with the Mogami cables that I've been touring with, but I wanted a slightly longer cable. I'm currently using two 18 foot cables from Mogami, and I really wanted a 25 foot, but I had a really hard time justifying the price increase over the past couple years. And what I like about this is the fact that it also has the Neutra ends that the Mogami cable has so I know that it's reliable. It's also TCI tuned which is Paul's latest endeavor where everything is fine-tuned to a sweet spot of an instrument so I'm expecting really good things and a good quality clear signal from this cable. The other thing that caught my attention was this red Neutrik end that features this little silver sleeve which they call the silent switch and what it does is when it's up it does not pass signal from one end of the cable to the other, from the output jack of the guitar into the input jack of your pedal board or amplifier. And when it's down and plugged in, it allows the signal to pass freely. So today we're gonna test this out and see if it's really worth the price. So right now I just have my regular Mogami cable plugged in where it has the regular black noise trick end. And when I'm playing, <laughs> passes like it's supposed to but as soon as I unplug it right we get that pop cable can make noise right you go to plug back in makes the noise you guys all know what that's like so let's see if the PRS cable really lives up to its name and allows me to switch guitars and our cables silently so we're going to take the regular end and plug this into the fractal and then we're going to take the silent end and plug it into my guitar. So right off the bat being plugged in, there's no excess noise coming through the fractals. So far so good. I touch the plug, nothing's happening. If I pull the sleeve back, and then you hear it. So that's how it works, is when this cable is just free, it's not going to make any noise until it's plugged in. And when I put it into the output jack, no pops. No extra noise. As soon as it's plugged all the way in. Ready to go. I go to unplug it. And look at that. The reverb tail trails perfectly. There's no pop or excess noise. It just kind of sounds like I rolled my volume down real quick and swapped cables without any extra noise. So this is actually really impressive. Looking forward to using this on the road. And that just about wraps up today's video. I'm pretty impressed with this cable. I'm gonna take it out on the road to crash the party. We have about half a dozen shows left as of the timing of this video. And there are a couple stages where having the extra length is gonna be great considering some of these stages are pretty big. And while I'm still using my wireless system mainly, it's still nice to have a backup cable. And if there's ever any interference or I'm just not driving with the wireless that night, it's nice to have enough length in order to get to everywhere I need to be on stage. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments section below. Be sure to let me know what kind of cables you use and what you use them for. There's a difference between spending a lot of money for cables if you're just a hobbyist at home or if you're spending money on cables for a pro level studio or a high level tour. Let me know all that. You guys can check me out on social media. All of those links are in the description below. Until next time everyone, keep on following your dreams. <laughs>